Old Testament. There are others. But in the New Testament, Jesus also raised the dead. You know enough of that in the Bible. You know enough of the resurrection of the dead in the Bible? How many people Jesus raised from the dead? He raised the damn cell, which was my first challenge. Paul raised the dead in Acts of Apostles. But before we go into all those ones, let me read to you the scriptures that dealt with the power of raising the dead. Let's go straight to Matthew chapter 10. You shall read. It's a subject. Matthew 10. Everybody say Matthew 10. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Say that to everybody. Heal okay. the sick. Verse 1. Do you believe that? I mean, you, you are hearing there that he gave them power against unclean spirits. To cast them out and to heal all manner, any kind of disease, and all manner of sickness. Verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely what? Give. Oh Lord. Is part of the scripture. Before I come to the, these days' example, Jesus gave it as instruction that the sick should be healed, lepers should be cleansed, the dead should be raised. So it's not a wrong subject or a foul thing. Matthew 11. Are you there? Yes. Verse 1. It came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Verse 2. When John had heard in the prison the work of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Verse 4. Let me start, stop in verse 1 and 2. John got disgusted. John got discouraged. John put himself in trouble. John was a preacher of all you do wrong. No mercy in his message. He was a iniquity discoverer. But he prophesied. He said, I show you your sin, but Jesus takes it away. Every sin John saw, he pointed it out. But he said, behold the Lamb of God that takes it away. I show it to you, God takes it away. It's a ministry. John was a sin pointer. Jesus was a sin taker. Now who will you follow out of the two? The man who show you how bad you are? Or the man who turned you from bad to good? All right. You don't care. It's all right. I just asked, who will you follow? The man who says, you are terrible. Or the man who says, I can turn your terrible situation to terrific. Thank you, two people. Which one will you follow? That's ten people. Which one will you follow? All right. John, show it to you. Jesus takes it from you. John saw the sin that Herod committed with Herodian. And said it. Many things Jesus saw that have taught me a lesson. 
A pastor that wants to have a growing church must be merciful in his message. And I, I show you an example of the, one of the worst sins. A woman was caught in the, in the act of adultery. They brought her before Jesus. The Pharisees and Sadducees said she was caught in the very act. Every time I preach that subject, I love it. She was caught in the very act. What did you go there to do when you caught her? You didn't hear what I'm saying. You who caught her. That's not your house. That was her house. What took you there to catch her in the very act? She must have been your old customer. And the reason you came to report is that she missed you and followed another man. That's how I teach it at home. Because if you, if, if you caught her in the very act, she was not in your house. What were you there to do? Do I make sense to you? Because yes. if you caught her, you must have had the spare key of her door. That's strong. Well, this is for only married people. That's okay then. <laughs> huh? you, you have the spare key to her room. When you opened another man was there, you were very disappointed. So what you did was to go and tell Jesus, see what I saw. And Jesus said, okay, no problem. How many of you? Seven. One. On Monday, David, you were there. On Tuesday, John, you were there. On Wednesday, Simon, you were there. On Thursday, the Bible said, when they looked down and saw their names, the stone that they raised, they put it down. And Jesus said, fine, go and sin no more. How did that one come in? How did this subject come in? John's behavior and Christ's behavior. Mercy and pardon. Are you hearing me? Okay. But John put himself in trouble and he was put in prison awaiting to be killed. But he heard all that Jesus was doing. He got very troubled. Why did Jesus not come here to bail me out? It was not John. It was not Jesus that sent him to prison. His mouth and his poor gospel. And when you are a pastor that's only a sin discoverer and not a sin forgiver, your church will never grow. It doesn't matter how much you preach hell. And if you preach hell too much, many of your members don't make heaven. I hope somebody's hearing what I'm saying tonight. If you preach Poverty too much. There have been no many cars in the front of your church. If you love poverty. If you love sickness. Many of your members would not be well. We're on the subject tonight, raising the dead. Look at verse. John, God discovered his son for Christ. Verse 3. Matthew eleven three. He said unto him. Are thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them whom he sent, Go and show John again. Somebody say again. Amen. One miracle is not enough. More than one is good. Show him again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Now you can shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus said, beside the sight for the blind, strength to the lame feet, Cleansing for lepers, hearing for the deaf. Part of the gospel is that the dead are raised up. Amen. Did you catch that? Yes. It's part of his ministry. Yes. 